Mm. Okay, welcome to the Calvin cycle. I thought uh, instead of building it up, I might present you with a fait accompli this morning. Um, so, uh, when I was your age, I used to I like words. I like to have a little paragraph of stuff written down rather than a diagram. Um, and the longer I've been teaching, the more I like diagrams because you have to figure it out. You have to figure out what's going on with it when you get a diagram. Uh, so I thought we'd start with figuring out what's going on in my diagram. So this is uh, Calvin cycle. These are uh, otherwise known as the light independent reactions. which means that they don't need light to happen. However, I do need to warn you, they won't happen unless the light-dependent reactions are going on. So, when you look at it, the first thing we notice is it's a circle, which is lovely. And we've got sort of chemicals going round, like we do in Krebs cycle, and we've got stuff coming in. And I think... Uh, now, if you've learnt your light-dependent reactions, you will realise that these two things going in, the NADPH and the ATP, are from the light-dependent. Now, where are they going in between? They're going in between this thing called GP, and this thing called TP. So these two things must be, if we're figuring it out, converting GP, whatever that may be, into TP. And I'm going to assume, be wrong, but I'm going to assume that the NADP, because we need that in the light dependent reactions to be our final electron acceptor, that what it's going to be losing, just like uh, in anaerobic respiration and in the electron transport chain, oxidative phosphorylation in chloroplast, it's going to be losing its hydrogen. So actually, the NADPH, I'm going to assume, is reducing the GP and making it into TP. And I think certainly that's something, if you come across this in an exam, you would always say that the NADPH reduces GP to TP and obviously that's using some energy up as well. Moving around then we've got uh, TP and it would be a big surprise if I told you that this is triose phosphate. Not many other things in biology that TP could stand for. And we're making this big chemical ribulose bisphosphate from that, and again we're using ATP for that. Bi means two, this has got one phosphate, so what ATP must be providing is some phosphate for phosphorylation. Oh, chair's not swelling very well. Okay, so we can figure that out from the diagram. And then we've got something else coming in. So we've got carbon dioxide coming in. So what's going on there? And we are joining it, because that's what those two arrows coming together means, to this ribulose bisphosphate. So ribulose bisphosphate, what does it tell me on the diagram? I've got five carbons there. I've got one carbon there. Shockingly, 1 plus 5 equals 6. That's where that 6 carbon compound's coming from. And then, if this is triose phosphate, that means it's got 3 carbons. If we're getting 2 GPs out of our 6 carbon compound, that must also be 3 carbons. So this must be a splitting 
So we've broken up our two, our six carbon compound into two three carbon compounds. So here we've got a joining, and here we've got an enzyme, Rubisco. So Rubisco is going to join carbon dioxide to RUBP. Now in respiration we did decarboxylation reactions. So this is the opposite of that, we're carboxylating uh, ribulose bisphosphate. So Rubisco actually stands for ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase. So that's kind of it in essence <clears throat> and you do need to learn it and I think it is a little bit easier, there's far less in it than in Krebs cycle. Um, but I know that some of you don't deal very well with cycles. Miss O'Donnell in Learning Support tells me that some people cannot process a circle. And that's fine. So if you're having difficulty actually learning that, learning that sequence, because just because it's a circle, try doing it as a star instead. Um, and I quite like the star model because you can put in what's going in, so CO2, what's it joining to, RUBP, five carbons, enzyme Rubisco, what do we get out, a six carbon compound, splits, to give GP, Add in NADPH, so this is a reduction, and you can write in between the spokes, which is, you know, you can put quite a lot of detail in there. We're going to add in ATP, we're going to get out TP, we're going to put in ATP, to phosphorylate, and we're going to recycle or regenerate, that's a better word, RUBP. So that's the, the other way. Now obviously in an exam what you're going to get is probably this, you're not going to get that. But if you've got that and you've, that's how you have learnt it, then when you come to the exam you can sketch your star and relate it across which might help to you to interpret what's going on if you've got anything, you know. So sometimes they'll be, you know, missing things off and saying, well, what's this compound, what's this compound for your AO1 marks. Um, so what's the point of making triose phosphate and then remaking your ribulose biphosphate? Well, of course, not all of your triose phosphate ends up being uh, ribulose bisphosphate. So some of it, so five sixths of it is regenerated, this is not an efficient process, and one sixth of that goes off to make hexoses, which you can convert into sugar, uh, you can convert it into starch, because of course we're dealing with plants here, we can make from that glycerol, shockingly fatty acids, which we can join together to make lipids. We can add phosphate to those and make phospholipids. We've got a bit of nitrogen available, form of nitrates. We can make amino acids. We can make proteins. We can make nucleic acids like DNA. So once we've got triose phosphate, we can make everything else that the, um, and of course we can make chlorophyll. if we've got some magnesium. So obviously to make sort of all the trickier molecules that don't just contain carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, we've got to add 
mineral nutrients in. <coughs> so, what can I ask you that's a bit more tricky than that? Obviously they could give you some numbers to deal with. Um, but I think that uh, one of the things that uh, has come up in the past certainly is pesticides blocking electron transport and therefore blocking the production of NADPH and ATP and therefore sort of stopping that bit of the cycle and if you stop that bit of the cycle all that happens is that your GP builds up and you can't do anything with it until your RUBP runs out and then it won't build up anymore and that they could present uh, graphically um, we'll do, I'll do a few graphs in a minute so um, how that would lead to the plant dying, so if you're looking at a herbicide, it's stopping the production of these. How does it make the plant die? Well, without all of these things, then you can't do respiration, and certainly with the hexoses, if you're not making glucose, you're not respiring. So that will cause the plant to die. So there's a bit of a link there. Uh, so that's the Kelvin cycle. Ooh. You've had 11 minutes of that. See me next time for graphs.